Hello, pre-calc kids. Welcome back to another lesson in pre-calculus. This is Mr. Bean, and today's lesson is going to be on understanding linear functions and exponential functions and how those compare with the sequences that we worked on from our last lesson. So to start us off, we're first going to look at arithmetic sequences. Now, you remember those here. You can see we had this sequence here where we had a naught, the initial first term, and then we'd add the difference times whatever term number we, we had. So a linear function can be represented by something very similar, which is in slope-intercept form. If you remember back to your Algebra 1 days, we'd think of this as mx plus b. That's our, that's our slope-intercept form. I just have switched around the mx and the b, since it's just addition, you can do that, because that makes it look very similar to the arithmetic sequence. They are very, very similar. So think about that. The initial value, we start off with an a naught. Here, the initial value would be your y-intercept. So we have either an a naught or a b for our initial values. So then here we look at the, what's the constant rate of change? Well, for here, we're changing by the, the common difference in an arithmetic sequence. Over here, it's the slope. So either the D or the M. They are very, very similar. So you can see here how linear functions would match up with arithmetic sequences. Now, we also did in our last lesson where you might have the kth term. And so you'd have this sequence here written out like this, where uh, that's the K term, the K, the the term number, excuse me, and this would be the kth term. Well, you can do that as well with lines, with linear functions, with slope-intercept form. Now, this is a play on, or I should say a manipulation of what you're probably used to seeing, which is this, m and then x minus x1. So you have some coordinate point. So y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. All I've done is I've just added this y1 over to the other side. So it might be like this, y sub 1 plus this, or you could even say, uh, I don't want to mess you all up here. You could also just say a plus y1 at the end, and it would work out the same way. In fact, I think in a lot of my answers on the practice, this is how I wrote it, but it, it doesn't matter, you know, that way or, or like this that I have in blue. That's fine. Uh, but you can see how that matches up with what we've done with the arithmetic sequence and how uh, if you have a coordinate point, so if we have some coordinate point, x1, y1, that is very similar to taking the term of an arithmetic sequence where you have the, the k is the term number and then a of a sub k is the actual term. All right, so we've got linear functions and arithmetic sequences. Now let's compare exponential functions and geometric sequences and how those are similar. So first we have the geometric sequence. We've done this from our last lesson. And then you jump over here to the exponential function. So a, b raised to the x. Now I am going to, in a lot of my problems, this b, this is how they usually do it in textbooks or, uh, you know, a lot of most teachers will say a times b raised to the x. But that b, I'm going to also write it as an r in a lot of places. You'll see me do that just because r, well, I'll explain it here in a second. But r is a very easy term to help us remember because it has to do with a ratio uh, and it's the base of the exponent. So when we, when we don't have our initial value, so we have a is the initial value, g naught is the initial value. So when we don't have that, and we're going to shift it, then it would look like this here, where we have the k ter the kth term, and that's our term here. We practiced last one. So what does that look like for exponential functions? It would be this, where we have a coordinate point. So we have some minus x1, and then here we, we put in front, instead of the initial, we put the y value of whichever coordinate point we're working with. So again, this x1, y1 for an exponential function is very similar to the k g of k term for a geometric sequence. So the point for an exponential function, similar to the term for a geometric sequence. Now, so we have all these similarities, but there is a big important difference between the two. And that is that if we are looking at the domain, the domain for a sequence is just these distinct dots, these points, whoops. And so the domain of the sequence is discrete points. The domain is, discrete just means individual separated coordinate points. All right, that is the, do the domain when we're talking about sequences. Whereas if we're talking about the entire function, an exponential function would have a domain of all real numbers. You can just say all real numbers if you want. I said from negative infinity to infinity, but you could have just said all real numbers, period, and left it like that. Okay, so uh, if you overlap these, then you'd get this thing. So you can see the dots are the sequence, but the line is every single thing in between as well. Uh, so it's ev it's everything for the, the domain. So we have some similarities with linear functions and exponential functions. And uh, specifically, when we're talking about the idea of having an initial value 
as well as a constant that involves change. So those two things. Now the difference is that with linear function, it's based on addition. With exponential functions, it's based on multiplication. So here I have uh, the how to recognize if it's linear or if it's exponential. If the output values are changing at a constant rate, then the function is linear. It means we're adding the slope. So if the output values, and that's only if the equal length, if you have equal length input values, so like if the x's are equal length and the y's are changing at a constant rate, then the function is linear. If you have input equal length input values and the function is changing proportionally, then the function is exponential. And what we mean by proportionally is you're multiplying the same thing over and over again. We're multiplying the ratio. So when we're adding the same number over and over, we have linear multiplying exponential. So down here, could the function represent linear, exponential, or neither? And the important thing is could, because these are just three points. So we don't know for sure exactly what these are, but could it be linear, exponential, or it's definitely neither of those. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, first let's check. We're, go, we're at two, three, and four. So the x values are equal length. So what I wanna do is I'm going to check from one to four, how, how much do I have to add? I'd have to add three. And then to get from four to 16, I'd have to add 12. So I know that this is not linear. So I'm gonna say uh, no, no to this first line, just reminding me, okay, this is, they are not the same numbers. It would, if for this to be linear, I'd have to be adding the same amount each time. So then just right below that, I'm gonna say, what about multiplying? One times what gives me four? Well, if I multiply by four, that would work. And then four times something else gets me to 16. That's also multiplying by four. So there we go. So that I'm gonna say yes to, just for, to help me remind myself that these are the same. Therefore, my answer to this one is exponential. Okay, and it's exponential because I can see I'm multiplying by the same ratio each time. All right, next one. So now we're going five, six, seven for the X values. So that works, they're all the same. Uh, same distance, I should say. So now I'm gonna go from three to seven and then from seven to 10. So if I add from three to seven, that's adding four. And if I go from seven to 10, that's adding three. So that doesn't work. So how about multiplying? Three to seven. So if I don't know how to get from multiply three to seven, so I go the other way by dividing seven divided by three. So I just make a fraction, seven thirds. And then here I'd be multiplying by, let's just make the fraction 10 over seven. 10 sevenths. Well, seven thirds and 10 sevenths, those are not the same. So my answer to both of these is no on the first one, no on the second one. So this is neither. It's neither exponential or linear. And then the last one here, negative one to seven. Oh wait, check the X values. Three to five is two. Five to seven is also two. Okay, so that works. It's equal length. It doesn't have to just be by one, as long as the X values are changing by equal length input values. All right, negative one to seven, that would be adding eight. And then from seven to 15, that is also adding eight. So I can stop. Since they're the same right there, I know. Okay, I'm just gonna write this for myself. Yes, this is the same and we're adding the same uh, constant rate. So my answer is linear and we're done with that one. All right, these. If you know a function is linear exponential, if you already know that. So we know for sure it is linear exponential, or if we're talking about sequences, that would work the same as arithmetic and ge or geometric, so correspondingly. Then we only have to have two points, two values, and we can create a function for, or a rule, I should say, some type of equation or rule for the function or sequence. So here we know, we're gonna say f of x is a linear function, and it passes through the points three, seven, eight, one. Let's write an equation. So what do we need here? Let's first cut, find the slope. So slope equals, the two y values over the two x values, the difference between, it doesn't matter which one I start with. I can do seven minus one. I don't have to do one minus seven. Uh, some of you are freaking out right now my, because I'm doing the first one. It doesn't matter which one I start with. What matters is that the one on bottom follows that. So if I do seven first, then the, x, the three for the x value has to also go first. You just have to be consistent with which one you use first. So then three minus eight. Uh, if some of you are, don't believe me, go ahead and switch them. You'll get the same answer as me. Seven minus one is six. Three minus eight is negative five. So negative six fifths, there's my M. So now we can create an equation. Either one of these points would work. So I'm gonna say F of X equals, and if you remember back to our point slope form, it would look something like this. I think uh, I'm gonna just do how I did in the practice. So that would be, I'm gonna use the slope here, negative six fifths. 
and then multiply it by x minus 3. I'm going to use this point first, and then plus the 7 at the end here. Okay, or you also could have written as your answer. This is you don't need to write both of them for uh, for the practice. Don't write both. It's just I'm telling you that it could have been either one. Negative six fifths, and then if I use the other po coordinate point, it would be x minus eight plus one. So what you would see on an AP exam might be that you, the, if this was one of the answers and it was multiple choice, they wouldn't have this as the answer. What they would probably do is distribute the negative six fifths, add the seven, and then you'd get your answer. That's how they would do it. So then you'd know exactly which one you're choosing for uh, for the multiple choice. Okay, and then this one here. So this is probably the hardest thing you have to do in the practice. And that is now we're doing an exponential function. Uh, and we're trying to come up with a rule here. So it the hard part is trying to figure out the ratio. That's what we need to know. What does r equal? So in order to do that, I want to remind you that, uh, you know, y equals a b to the x, or in other words, I should say y equals a, I'm going to say r to the x just for the ratio part. It's the same thing, b or r, doesn't really matter. Okay, so I know at 2, 5, I have this point, and when I get to 4, 12, I'm at this point. So think about this. If I start at 5 and I multiply by whatever my ratio is one time, I would then be at the 3 comma something. I'm going to put a question mark there. So if I did took the 5 and I multiplied by the ratio, I would now be at one more point. If I took it, this thing and multiplied by the ratio again, I would then be at 4. So if I, t I'm at, if I have 5 and I multiply 2 times, I'm going to go from an x value of 2 to 3, 4, 2 more times. And so then this would equal 12. See how I did that? So uh, I take the I started with the five multiplied by r two times. So now I have twelve fifths equals r squared, and then r would equal. So normally we would say plus or minus. So twelve fifths. Normally we would say pl plus or minus the square root of twelve fifths, but you don't have to say plus or minus because this is a ratio for an exponential function, and that that ratio that we're using is the base. That's never going to be negative for uh, for exponential functions. Okay, so it's just the positive, the principal root for this. All right, so now that we know that r we have to come up with an equation. So we have two options. Let's use the first point. So I have y equals, oh, not y, I'm supposed to use f of x, huh? There we go. Okay, so I can use this coordinate point and say five, and then I'm going to multiply it by the ratio, which is the square root of 12 fifths. And then I have to raise that to x minus two. So that's how I use the coordinate point. It's shifted two, and then I'm using the y value there. Uh, or another way of writing this would be the other coordinate point. So 12 times the square root of 12, fifth, 12 fifths, yep. And then raise it to, and then this time it's gonna be x minus four. I have to shift it over four times because I'm using that x value. Okay, so one of those two would be the answer. Either one of them would work. On the practice, don't put both, just put one of them. Okay, next is the very, very easy thing. And that is all you have to do is just, if you look at the equation, we're just asking you to identify the value um, Identify the constant. That's what I'm looking for. So identify the constant and is it a slope or a ratio? What causes the output values to change? So what's causing the output values to change? This this two right here. So and what is that? That's a ratio. So I would just say ratio of two. That's the constant that we're working with. This one's linear. So it is a slope of five. That's all you have to do for these. Just recognize if it's a ratio or a slope, and then what is it? What's the constant? Just identify it from the numbers. Okay, super easy. All right, and then the last two, this is similar to what we've already done before, but I, I've got this little extra thing of justify. So just kind of pay attention to how we're gonna justify this. So what you, we've gotta do first is identify that these numbers are changing by the same amount. That's changing by four, that's changing by four. And then these, what's happening? So is it subtraction, is it um, are we multiplying or are we adding something? So here, to go from 10 to 6, we'd be subtracting 4 or adding negative 4. And then here again would also be adding a negative 4. So right away, I can tell this is linear. So I know it's linear, but it's we've also got to justify our answer. So this is how we do that. We're going to say that the function is linear because for each input change of 4, so the inputs were changing by 4, f has a constant rate of change of negative 4. This is a nice, clear justification and explanation of what's happening. It's linear because for each input change of four, f has a constant rate of change of negative four. And that's 
the important part that tells us it's linear. Okay, so now this one, as you can guess, it's probably going to be exponential. And it is because that would be weird if I gave you an example that wasn't. Uh, so this one, we're going from 1 to 3 is a change of 2. 3 to 5 is also a change of 2, so we're good there. I've already told you it's going to be exponential, but you might have to check them both. So I'm just going to show you if I was checking it, I'd be like, okay, that's adding 4. And then I'd get here and I'd be like, oh, that's adding 12. That doesn't work. So then I would try the multiplication and I'd multiply 2 times something. 2 times 3 uh, is, uh, is 6. And then 6 times 3 is 18. So there we go. It's exponential. And my answer would be this. I'm going to say it's exponential because for each input change of 2, the inputs were changing by 2, f is changing proportionally by a ratio of 3. So the key here is I'm really, is we're really looking for that you understand that it's changing proportionally by a ratio of 3, and that demonstrates that you know it's exponential. Same here. This constant rate of change of negative 4 is showing you that it's linear. All right, so that's the justification we're looking for. And that is the end of the lesson. So rock that mastery check, and I'll see you back in the next one.